In this video, we are going to use the skills we developed in these uh, last previous videos in order to draw some deflected shapes of these structures and use those deflected shapes in order to uh, identify what the bending moment distribution would be and so we can draw a bending moment diagram of these different structures. And this is intended to be uh, really an intuitive understanding of how these structures are going to behave. And so if we can think about, well, if we put some load on them, how are they going to deform? Uh, we can use that deformation uh, and then by plotting on the uh, tension side, we know what side the moment's going to be. And then looking at the types of loading, whether it's point loads, distributed loads, etc., we can determine what the distribution of that bending moment diagram would be. And then from that, work out what our uh, expected shears and axial forces are. And where this is really uh, very, very useful <clears throat> is a uh, an element like this where there's, uh, it's an indeterminate structure where, you know, we have more um, unknowns than we have uh, equations of static equilibrium. So we've got two pins uh, down here. So, uh, you know, this is a pin and this is a pin. Well, you're going to have, you know, a force uh, potentially in each of these directions where you're both vertical and horizontal. So you've got uh, one, two, three, four unknowns and three equations of equilibrium. So the, uh, the first thing we're going to do is, you know, try to draw what the deflected shape of this structure is. I'm just put up uh, a little delta here. And, uh, and then from that deflected shape, we will uh, work out what this bending moment diagram is. Now, one of the questions which is always uh, asked uh, is, you know, what is this deflected shape? What does it look like? And, and how do we start? Well, uh, let's start with, remember, we have a few rules. And um, if ever we're, we're lost, we can sort of uh, stick to those rules. So we'll ultimately draw the deflected shape uh, with the red pen here. But I'll go back and forth with some pencil because I think we might need to iterate a little bit. So the first thing that we know is at the pins, well, we have no movement either vertically or horizontally. So we know that our deflected shape uh, is going to be, uh, our deformations are going to be zero at these points. Now the next thing we have is well, we've got no forces um, acting on the columns. So that's going to be, um, you know, when we we'll have some sort of constant uh, moment across there or um, or a, a linear distribution, so no forces, so uh, shear will be uh, at most constant. Um, and then, well, what do we what do we know about this beam? Well, if the if we look at the beam, if we if this was a simply supported beam like that, well, we we know what that deflected shape looks like. It would look like like this, just bending as a U. So that's the deflected shape if it were only a beam. Now, one of the rules that we have is that if we have a corner, which is starts at 90 degrees, well, it has to maintain uh, this fixity. And so we would have uh, 90 degrees pointing out. So if we're, if we're curving up, well, then it's got to curve out. So if, uh, if this were just a beam and, and the, uh, the legs weren't attached, you know, the columns would just continue out kind of forever, just splaying out like that. But we know when we started that the, the, uh, the form shape has to be uh, zero deformation at these pins. And so we're, we're not going to get uh, these columns just splaying out. Well, we have to get, they'll have to bend down. So all of a sudden now we know, well, our column physically has to bend down in order for um, this joint to, um, you know, stay at 90 degrees and come back around. So now let's start just plotting what the, uh, what the tension side uh, is going to be. You know, just write, you know, little T's where we know we have tension. So if we're bending out, you know, it's bending like this, uh, we'll get our our little uh, foam beam here. If it's bending like this, well, the side is in tension, the side is in compression, and then like this, 
Uh, again, this outside is in tension. So we'll just write tension, tension, tension. Well, we know if we have tension there, um, you know, we'd have the moment on the outside here. So where do we have tension on? Uh, well, we know we have it on the bottom here. Tension. Well, now all of a sudden we've run into an issue. Because recall that one of our rules was that if we have a moment at a corner, so I'll just draw a little element here, um, that, you know, if we have a moment on the corner, it has to be equal and opposite uh, as it goes around that corner. So it's either going to be on the outside, M, or it will be uh, going on the, we'll plot it on the inside, depending upon if it is a positive or a negative moment. And just plot this up quickly for you. And then both of those values are M. Now, uh, yet another rule which we had is we are always going to plot on the tension side. So that means that we can use the tension side to determine what side our moment is on. And currently, the way that we have this drawn up, we have the tension on the outside of the column and on the underside of the beam which we don't have either of these two cases. We kind of have something where uh, we have it on the outside of the column. So I'll just draw it up here. And, you know, I'm drawing this as a, uh, a, a rectangle just uh, because this is sort of as a, an arbitrary, just quick in a way to just sort of get my head wrapped around it. And it's not necessarily a uniform load, so we'll look at that here in a bit. But currently, the way we have this deformed shape drawn, uh, we've got moment on the outside, moment on the inside. Well, this can't be. We can't have that um, because they we're not equal and opposite. We might have the equal magnitude, but they're going the same direction. So that means that this element wouldn't be in uh, equilibrium. So what does that mean? Well, that means that um, these well, we're not going to be in tension on the bottom. We have to be in tension on the top. Well, you know, if we have this beam here, it's like, well, does that mean there's tension on the top the whole way? Well, that doesn't make sense. That would be a beam bending up like this. And so, well, you know, when in doubt, let's grab a physical model. So uh, we essentially, here we've got two fixed ends. So we've got two fixed ends. And so I'm just going to bring this together just to kind of get a deformed shape. So imagine we've got two point loads coming down. Uh, I've run out of hands, so we'll just uh, put it like this. But you can see that we get... Um, we change curvatures. We're on the ends. Uh, the top is in tension. And in the middle, the bottom is in tension. And that's exactly what we have going on here. So we're going to start with the top. And then at some point, it will transition to the bottom. And so those points will be our inflection points. And we'll just mark them with uh, two little circles here on the, uh, on the deformed shape. And... Um, I think there, and so that means that if this is going to be tension on the top, we have a curvature kind of like this coming down, and then eventually it bends back up. So tension on the top to tension on the bottom. All right, so we've got that in pencil. I think that actually that's a deformed shape, which makes a, a fair amount of sense. So uh, let's just draw over that. Uh, in our red pen just to uh, finalize it, make it a little bit more uh, apparent. And we'll, again, just mark the tension side. And uh, where we've got a 90 degree corner, we'll even mark that one in. And again, the deflected shape. around something like that and we'll just mark inflection points very good so um, and we'll uh, just to clean this up a bit a bit but you can see this is doing this in in pencil is very good because it can be a, a bit iterative um, uh, until you sort of get a feel for this. So uh, it looks a little messy there, but you know, we've got tension on the top and tension on the bottom. 
So now if we look at our moment diagram, uh, let's just go ahead and uh, just sort of, you know, put, we know we got tension here, tension here, tension on the top, tension on the top, tension on the bottom. Well, um, we know if we have tension on the top, our moment diagram has to be on the top here. And if we're on the sides, well, this has to be equal and opposite. You know, we have to have one of these two cases. So if it's uh, on the outside, we'll mark it on the outside. Now, uh, we can use our rules about what do we know about um, uh, shear and bending moment diagrams. Um, and so uh, we know that if we have uh, you know, no load, well, we have a constant shear um, because the load is going to be uh, you know, proportional to the slope of the shear force diagram. So if it's zero across there, well, we'll have a uh, constant shear. Um, and that, you know, magnitude of that shear will be, um, you know, the slope of the moment diagram. So if we have a uh, constant shear, well, then we're going to have a linear moment diagram. So we know we, uh, you know, for equilibrium to happen, we know the corner, we have some moment here. And at a pin, we know it has to be zero. And if this is a uh, constant shear, um, then we know we have a linear moment distribution. And we can just draw that in and make this a, a little bit bigger just so it matches the other side better. All right, so we've got the columns figured out, and we'll, we'll draw what way it's bending here. Now for the beam. Well, uh, again, if this were uh, simply a simply supported beam with two point loads, well, we know the bending moment diagram looks like that, doesn't it? Where we've got a, um, you know, we've got no load here, so we're going to have a uniform shear. Um, and if we have a uniform shear, we will have a linear distribution of moment, and then same over here. And then in the middle, because uh, this is a symmetric structure, and again, this is using uh, some, some knowledge we have about these simpler structures and what the uh, bending moment distribution would be, well, we, we can be pretty confident that we have uh, no shear in the middle here because these two loads are the same. Um, and so you'd have a 30 kilonewton, and you have a symmetric structure, so you'd have 30 kilonewtons up and then 30 kilonewtons down. 0, 30 kilonewtons down, then 30 kilonewtons up, which is the um, reaction there. So that's how we're going to draw that in. And, and as I say, uh, a lot of this is uh, through understanding of how some of these simpler structures, um, what the bending moment distribution is out of those, and applying that knowledge to um, these more complicated frames. So that's our bending moment diagram. And as I said, with these, it's really useful um, to do this sort of deflected shape to bending moment diagram because it helps give you an intuition because we've, uh, we're have we pretty good as people of just understanding how a thing's going to bend and move uh, because we've, we've done that before and we've pushed on stuff. But, you know, this bending moment thing's kind of new uh, to us. And so let me just uh, label a few points here. We, you know, we've got the moment's going to be equal and opposite. Um, then again, here on the column, we have a, a load is equal zero. So our shear is constant. And so our moment is linear. Remember, with linear, it's going to be constant slope. And uh, yeah, and so remember, this is just uh, if we can use utilize these rules uh, to work through this. And so similarly, if we have the bending moment diagram, uh, we can work out what our shear force diagram would be. So, um, you know, we, we said we have a constant shear uh, in the column, so uh, let's draw that in. And um, 
Again, thinking about the deflected shape, if it's, if it's bowing out like this, well, think about what's restraining it. So this column really wants to kick out this way, so there's got to be a force pushing it in. So we're fairly confident we've got a force pushing in like this, and then two forces up. And so we can figure out sort of the direction of these without doing any math, just sort of thinking about well, what's, you know, if the structure wants to bend out, well, what's bringing it back in? It has to be a reaction. So if we do that, well, let's just go ahead and uh, draw what our shear force diagram is going to be. So we know that we're going to go uh, this way and that way. So I'll just draw that in. And we'll go this way and this way. And we know we're opposite um, on the other side. And then the shear force for the beam oh, will be very similar to what's up top uh, here for if this were uh, just a normal beam. And you know, the uh, this is our bending moment. Well, our shear force diagram, we'd have no shear through the middle. That's V. So that's what we're going to look at with this beam. Uh, same thing, you know, we have a constant slope, so our shear force will go up, then it'll come down, then down, and then over. So that's our shear force in the beam. And then finally, well, we can also do the axial force, because remember, if we're going around a corner, uh, the shear force becomes the axial forces. So uh, we know that uh, we've got a really strong intuition that well, we have to have a, a force pushing up if this is the only thing is uh, what's pushing down. So that's going to be on both columns. So we can say that the columns will be in compression. And so we'll just draw those on the same side. And we'll put a little C for compression. And then if we look at our shear force diagram, well, if it's uh, on the columns, it's sort of pushing out. It means that, you know, equal and opposite onto the beams. It's got to be pushing in. And so that would mean that our uh, little beam will also be in compression. So that's um, sort of how our, uh, our general intuition would work it out. And so let's just, uh, let's see if we're right. So what I want to do is just go, we'll just quickly look at the uh, shear and bending moment diagram uh, from some computer analysis. So this is our element here. You can see it's got uh, the two point loads in a pin, pin base. And then, so let's have a look at the deformed shape. So that's kind of exactly what we had where the columns are bending in. And then we have a little bit of curvature at the top here uh, to match, and then mostly um, it's in sort of uh, a compression on the top, tension on the bottom. So uh, let's have a look at what the uh, bending moments are going to look like for this. We'll go OK. And as you can see, uh, just kind of exactly what we've drawn, where, uh, you know, we're bending on the outside at that joint, uh, and in the middle uh, we have compression on the top, so we have a, a positive bending moment there. And um, so yeah, it's uh, as you can see from the deflected shapes, uh, you, you get a very, very similar response. So with that, now I want to have a look at uh, just one more structure, something very similar. And I want to look at this because uh, it is so similar, and uh, we've already done uh, the shear and bending moment diagrams in a previous video for this, uh, just working it out uh, with equations. And so this is, uh, the sh you know, the only change here is we have a pin and we have a roller. So if we want to find the deflected shape, well, what does it want to do? 
Uh, again, I, I think the, you know, uh, things which are important to keep in mind are where do we know that we have a deflection of zero? Well, the only place we have a deflection of zero is right here at the pin. So at the roller, remember, we can move backwards or forwards any way we want to go. So as we said uh, in our sort of previous example, if this were just a beam, so say this is a beam and it has these two little legs. Well, those two little legs just want to splay out to stay at 90 degrees. So that this, and uh, you know, in our previous case, well, we had a pin here, so we, we stopped it from moving. But here, well, this whole thing can move out. So that means that we'll just draw this uh, over here uh, just a little bit. So this roller, there's nothing stopping it from moving over here. And if it did that, and we'll just draw a straight line up to say somewhere about here. Well, we can have that straight line and we could continue to forming. Just bending like a beam. And then again, we'd have to come right back down uh, to this pin here. And, um, you know, previously we said that, well, we, we can't do that because, you know, we, we were contained here and we had these uh, columns bending out. But if we're not restraining this end, well, and we're not uh, bending on this end, well, those can move straight out. And we can just continue with our, um, you know, just a single curvature here. So uh, we'll just draw this in. and just draw it in red just to make it a, a little bit clearer. And as I said, the only thing that's changing is we have these two little sticks, but otherwise it's bending exactly like if it were a simply supported beam with two point loads. You know, the deflected shape would look just like that. So, if that's the case, then, you know, what does our bending moment diagram look like? Well, if these things, if the columns haven't bent, well, then there's no moment in them. You know, that's, you know, it's, a, it's why we call it a bending moment diagram. So, that moment is what's creating bending stresses, and that's what's deforming uh, the element bending. If the columns are straight, well, it means that there's no shear in them. It means that we have zero bending moment here at the edge. And so our bending moment diagram is just the same as if it were a simply supported beam. Uh, we just happen to have some columns here. And so I'll just draw our bending moment diagram just like that. And then um, that would also follow on that our shear force diagram would just be going up on the right, over, down, uh, over, just like if it were a simply supported beam. And then our columns, uh, because they are both in compression, uh, we just draw that over to the side there. So this is that we would you know expect from our deflected shape. Let's go back to our computer analysis and, and see if uh, you know, if we're solving this analytically, would we get the same result? So uh, here, as you can see, a very similar model. But again, the only thing we've changed is we've put a roller on this side. So let's look at the deformed shape. And kind of exactly what we've drawn out. So you see here, the corners stay at 90 degrees. Uh, we have sort of positive curvature, so the tension is on the bottom the whole way. And then our columns are, are straight. And so what does that look like for our bending moment diagram? Just exactly what we have drawn up and what we found in a previous video uh, when we worked this out analytically. So uh, with that, I hope you found that, um, you know, this technique of using the deflected shape to help work out the bending moment diagram, you see a little bit of how we can do that. And I hope that you find this helpful. And what you might find is that, you know, you need to use some combination of a deflected shape, 
a bending moment diagram, taking free body diagrams, using your shear force diagram, and sort of go back and forth on these in order to solve all of them and really understand what the structure's doing. But always a good place to start if you're ever stuck is think about, you know, what the loads that are applied to the structure, how it would deform the structure, and then use your rules around um, equilibrium, around, you know, equal and opposite moments at a corner, your relationships between moment, shear, and axial load in order to solve these. So with that, thank you very much.